Hi, my name is Sarah Williams and I'm from Fayetteville, Arkansas. I will be discussing Mary McLeary's 2008 piece, The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer, which is located at Crystal Bridges in Bentonville, Arkansas. Mary McLeary was born in Houston, Texas in 1951. She received her BFA from Texas Christian University and an MFA from the University of Oklahoma. From 1975 to 2005, she was a professor of art at Stephen F. Austin University. Out of her impressive number of works, several of her pieces have been displayed at such venues as the National Museum of Women and the Arts in Washington, D.C. McCleary was raised in a religious household but did not believe herself to be a Christian until her late 30s when she became fascinated by biblical stories. Since then, she has become enthralled by poetry with Christian themes, which she incorporates into all of her creations. McCleary's pieces are characterized by their complexity in media and subject matter, a trait she did not initially possess. After college, she revived her interest in well-crafted, handmade objects and the general decorative arts that the women in her family had bestowed on her since a young age, and moved into a more realistic collage style that utilized ornate three-dimensional items. Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer depicts the scene of suburban turmoil and the reactions of the neighborhood people. McCleary uses a variety of items such as cotton, twigs, and rolled paper to create a complex image. The image is constructed in a loose triangle that is anchored by two houses. The tip of the fire and the white dove draw the viewer's attention upward and acts as the point of the triangle. Multiple groups of neighborhood residents are depicted in the midground with their backs turned to the viewer. There is a lone figure in the foreground that is emphasized by a separation from the other figures, his war paint covered face, and the lack of clothing. The pieces of twisted paper that compose the majority of the work are highly saturated in color. A stark contrast exists between the dark cool color of the background of the sky and houses and the hot, bright hot colors of the flames on the home. The passionate flames illuminate the flesh tones of the young man, projecting their intensity on the otherwise emotionless youth. Contrasting colors as well as contrasting rough and smooth textures of the paper and twigs create a type of visual tension that is accentuated by a spatial complexity. The piece obtains a sort of realistic quality due to its subject matter and techniques, but slightly romanticized due to the tension of the material interacting with each other and the melodrama of the scene. This piece can be analyzed most adeptly through a biographical lens with specific emphasis on the literature that has affected McCleary's life. Many of McCleary's works are based on biblical stories and poetry that she has grown deeply connected to as she matured. The work behind McCleary's piece is William Butler Yeats's poem, The Second Coming. Yeats's poem depicts the dark scene of the falcon turning high above its owner, which is demonstrated in the poem by the tiny white bird turning high above the action. The bird's wheeling above the main scene may be alluding to McCleary's, as well as Yeats's, belief in the cyclical nature of time and human spirit. The bird will continue its flight despite what is going on below it. Just like time in the human spirit, the bird's tenacity is firm. The substitution of a dove in place of a falcon can be understood as McCleary's way of linking the lost bird's flight to a personal search for spiritual understanding. Perhaps it took such a drastic event to bring together neighbors, and only due to their fear of the burning house do they turn their eyes to the lost dove in the sky. Like many people, the neighbors did not see the importance of community or religion until they were forced to. The foreground figure, however, does not look to the sky and does not examine the fire. Instead, he seems to be moving away from the group, and it still causes tension between the foreground and the rest of the piece. The disconnection of the young man embodies the innate spirituality that eludes much of humanity. Mary McCleary's work can be most easily categorized as a modern American spin on post-impressionism. Much like the art of the early post-impressionists, The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer is rendered in such a way where the color and construction of the piece can be viewed independently from the subject matter, yet still hold symbolic meaning. Though this work does not technically fall under post-impressionism due to the time period, it closely resembles the work of those select artists. This is most likely closer to an extension of post-impressionistic ideas with a return to realism than many contemporary pieces. Though not super realistic like the work of Chuck Close, The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer possesses a realistic quality not found in modern abstract or impressionistic works. Each element of The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer is defined by sharp color separation. Much like Vincent Van Gogh's 1888 work Bedroom at Arliss, the juxtaposition of color creates tension throughout the work. This piece also seems to have been strongly influenced by such works as Van Gogh's Starry Night. The swirling nature of Star Night is included in the swirling flames of McCleary's work, and the tiny brush strokes of Van Gogh's paintings are mimicked with the use of tiny twirled pieces of paper. The vibrant, broken colors presented in The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer shows the emotionally charged and overwhelmed response that should be a part of any person's response to a burning house. With the actual use of disconnected figures, dampens the emotional effect of the color. McCleary's The Falcon Cannot Hear the Falconer, like many post-impressionist pieces, depicts a somewhat non-traditional subject matter that is highly influenced by the unpredictability of nature as reflected through highly energetic artistic styles. I enjoy this piece because of how visually intense it is. It clearly communicates issues that are affecting modern day society, such as the dissolving need for community, rejection of tradition, and the loss of spirituality among the younger generation. 